In this video, we're going to create a GPT call calendars app um, that's going to connect to our Google Calendar via ZPI's AI action. So the GPT we will interact with will set up our event uh, on our Google Calendar, and it's going to do that by connecting to Zapier's AI action. So for example, the instruction will be set up a meeting for Thursday at 6 a.m. PT with Jill Smith at the Hyatt San Diego. So the calendar zap is going to reach out to Zapier's AI actions, and it's going to go ahead and create that event for us on our Google Calendar, as you can see here. And then what we're going to do is walk through how to create the AI actions in our GPT, so that way you can utilize uh, Zapier to connect your apps to the GPT and have the interaction with it from this interface. We're going to also take a look at the action sections here. So instead of creating the open AI, open API schema ourselves, we're going to actually uh, going to utilize the import from URL section. So that way you can see how that works. And then we're also going to provide our own custom instructions to make sure that the user is getting a proper response. This is going to be a very simple video, but very powerful so that we guys can understand how to connect uh, Zapier to uh, the GPT and that way perform uh, these actions. With that being said, let's get started. All right, so I'm at chat.opendiet.com. I'm already in my new GPT. So instead of interacting in the create side, I'm going to jump straight to the configure tab. Um, I'm going to name the GPT here called Calendars app. Now I'm going to create a photo profile picture using Dolly E. So I'm going to click on that. All right, so we're going to skip the descriptions for now and the instructions as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump in on Zapier's AI action. So I'm at actions.zapier.com. So for those of you who are not familiar with Zapier, um, Zapier is basically a company that provides uh, integration for web application uh, for using automated workflows. Uh, so Zapier provides workflows that kind of allow different web applications to be used in the same workflow. Um, and again, their their products kind of focus on automatic uh, automating recurring tasks such as lead management. Um, and then also they have a lot of other functionalities and a lot of other uh, apps that you can connect to to automate a lot of the work processes or workflows that are used on a day to day basis. Um, so users kind of set rules. Uh, that set up the flow of data between different tools and services. So that's essentially what Zapier is. Uh, so they have created this AI actions. As you can see, it's in uh, AI Alpha at this point. But what we're going to do is come down here and click on ChatGPT and GPTs. So in here, you guys can go ahead and you know read through. And they, they also have a tutorial if you're interested in looking at. But we're going to come down here in the Get Started section and then copy this URL. And we're going to go back here and go to uh, create new action. And in my last video, we used and created our own uh, open API schema here. But instead of that, now we're going to use the import from URL. So we're going to come here and paste the URL that we just copied. And then I'm going to click on import. And as you can see now, the open API schema has been created just by that URL that we just imported. Um, again, you can walk through the different sections of the API schema. In my previous video, I explained the different sections, so feel free to watch that so that way you have a, a better understanding if you want to uh, know the details of how the uh, uh, API schema works. I'm going to click back. And as you can see, um, the actions.zapier.com, uh, that's fully done here. And then what I'm going to do is now click on the instruction section. So now uh, I want to switch back to, the, to Zapier API actions. And if we scroll down, you can see that they have this instruction template for AI actions. Um, again, I'm going to copy this and then we'll kind of go through the step by step on what to do here. This is just the base. Uh, so we can do a lot of customization here. But for now, let me just copy this and we'll come back, paste it here. All right, let me format this a little bit so that way we can understand it a bit more. All right, so the first section is the rules. Um, so you can, as, as you can read here, uh, so before running any actions, we want to tell the user that they need to reply after actions complete to continue. So what this means is before 
actually running any Zapier actions, we want to make sure that the user wants to perform that action before continuing and reaching out to Zapier's AI actions in the back end. And if the user has confirmed and they have logged into Zapier AI actions, that's another requirement. You have to be logged into your Zapier's AI action. And if you don't have an account, you have to create an account in order to get to this section. So what this is going to do is this is going to make sure that the person who is trying to connect their Zapier account to the GPT is actually they have already been logged in into their Zapier's AI action. And then what we're going to do is move on to the next step. So that's the first check we want to do. So the step one is telling the user that you're checking in to make sure that the Zapier API actions that's needed to complete the request um, is actually available. So what this means is once the GPT is enabled, or the user puts in a prompt, the GPT is going to go ahead and connect to the Zapier API actions, and they're going to check to make sure that the required actions that's needed to perform that task is actually enabled. So what does this mean, right? So let's go ahead and switch to AI actions here, and we're going to come to my actions and click on manage actions. And as you can see right now, I don't have any actions, meaning if we try to run the GPT right now, it's going to give us an error because it's going to say we reached out to Zapier and it seems that the task that you're trying to uh, complete doesn't work because the action has been, not been enabled. So for our example in this GPT, because we're planning to create um, a calendar event, what that's going to require us to add, um, uh, enable a new action that kind of has to connect to our calendar. So what does this mean? So we're going to come here in um, Zapier AI actions and we're going to create a search for Google Calendar. All right, so now there's all sorts of events here that we can connect to in the Google Calendar. So what we're going to do is go ahead and select Quick Add Event. So what this does is it creates an event from a piece of text. Um, which is going to be uh, useful on our G uh, GPT because obviously we're going to create an event uh, by instructing the GPT with plain text. All right, so it has already connected to my calendar now. You guys can connect your calendar yourself. So when you click on click new, this is going to take you to your Google account and it's going to ask you for permission to add that calendar to Zapier. And you, then it's going to take you back right here. All right, so here I'm going to click on set a specific field for this. So this one you can leave as AI uh, guess. I have AI guess the value for this field or set a specific value. I'm just going to set a specific value and this is going to take a look at um, pull up the different calendars that's connected to that email account. So I'm going to click on the family one because that's my main calendar. Uh, and then I'm going to click on enable action. The describe event, I can leave this as a, I have AI guess the value for this field on enable action and now as you can see uh, the Google Calendar quick add event family calendar is enabled so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this off switch back here so now this first step this is basically complete for me um, because now the action that's required uh, for GPT to perform um, is enabled on the Zapier actions so step step number two um, so it says that if the required actions is not available, the send user the required action configuration event. So what this does is in case you the action is not found on Zapier's API action, it's going to tell them uh, that they need to enable that and it's going to give you that link. So step three is if the user confirms that they have configured the required action, continue to step four with the original request. So what step four is, does is uh, using the available actions ID, um, and again, this is something that it's going to uh, talk to Zapier's API action in the back end, um, and it's going to fill in the strings that's needed to run that action operation. So in order for all of this to happen, in order for all this to work, we need to specify the required actions here, right? So right now, this is from that uh, base template. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And ours was Google Calendar. Let me go back. I forgot now. called quick add event there you go so we're gonna say quick add event 
And then at the end, just to make it fun, uh, I'm going to add the following. So I'm going to say once you have created the event successfully, output the confirmation for the user using relevant emojis as bullet points. So example agenda, here's your event for Tuesday, November 7th. So I basically want the GPT to output the confirmation using these fun emojis. So and I'm giving it an example here. Um, so let's close this off now. And this is pretty much done at this point. So what we're going to do is now take a look at our Google Canada. As you can see, there's nothing here right now. So we're going to go back to our GPT and say, okay, so we said create a meeting for Thursday at 6 a.m. with Jill Smith at the Hyatt San Diego. And as you can see on my calendar right now, there's no event. So we're going to go ahead and press enter here. All right, so now um, it's reaching out to Zapier's uh, endpoint and it's asking us to give it the permission. So I'm going to click on allow. So now it's communicating with actions.zapier.com and it says, I have checked the available Zapier actions and found that Google Calendar quick add event action is available. I can proceed to create uh, the meeting for you. So now per our instruction, it's actually did exactly what we told it, right? So I went and first checked to make sure that the action that we're asking it to do is actually available on our uh, Zapier's AI actions. So I'm going to say confirmed. So I was going to go ahead and talk to um, the actions.zapier.com again. So I'm going to click on confirm. And again, it's reaching out and doing all this communication based on our AI actions and the open API schema that we presented here. All right. As you can see, uh, it created the event. It created the meeting, uh, the date and time, Thursday, January 4th at 6 a.m. Location, Hyatt San Diego, event summary, meeting with Jill Smith at Hyatt San Diego. And now if we switch over to our Google Calendar, there you go. As you can see, Thursday, January 4th at 6 a.m., I have a meeting with Jill Smith at the Hyatt San Diego. All right. So as you guys can see, this is a very powerful way to connect um, our GPT to Zapier's AI actions. And you guys are more than welcome to check out the rest of action. Again, you don't have to use um, Google calendars. There's lots of actions that you can use. So if you want to add any other program that you want to connect with your GPT, you'll just come into the actions here and type. So for example, if I want to do an Evernote to connect to Evernote, I'll just come click on uh, um, type Evernote here. And then these are all the actions that are available for me. And the same thing again, all the other um, applications that are in Zapier, you can connect it uh, via the action section and do all sorts of really cool stuff. All right. Hope you guys found this helpful. Thanks for watching.